The modern age of streaming has ensured that at any given moment, more or less, we have like tens of thousands of movies at our fingertips. But even in this modern age, there are some studios who decide to bury their own movies for one reason or another. Now, sometimes this has been for good reasons, but in others, it's for no good reason at all. And it's just kind of because someone somewhere deemed a movie as unworthy. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 horror movies and TV shows that you can no longer watch. Number 10, Freaked. Alex Winter's cult classic body horror comedy is by far one of the weirdest movies ever bankrolled by a major studio. In fact, it was deemed so weird and considered such poison that after disastrous test screenings, Fox just dumped it entirely, leading it to be a massive bomb at the box office. In fact, it only ever played in two cinema screens. But in spite that intentional burying, Freaked has endured as a real cult classic amongst horror fans, or at least those who can actually get their hands on it. And that's because since the early 2000s, the DVD release has long been out of print. And though Anchor Bay did produce a small run of Blu-rays in 2013, their rarity has made them collector's items on sites like eBay. Additionally, Freaked isn't available to stream anywhere, leaving those desperate to watch it either forking out over the odds for an out-of-print disc or resorting to low-quality bootleg streams on YouTube. And given that Freak was a movie produced by Fox and now Fox is owned by Disney, would it kill them to just put it on Disney Plus? Like, surely that's what a platform like that is for. Just get content on there and some of it will be a fan favorite like this. Number 9, Fright Night Part 2. Though it certainly wasn't a critical fave upon first release, Fright Night Part 2 did fare much better with fans. Even if, let's face it, it can't hold a candle to Tom Holland's, no, not that one, 1985 original. Yet, its frustratingly threadbare release history is uniquely fascinatingly complex, as the film's theatrical bow was derailed by the murder of Carl Loco Pictures chairman Jose Menendez, causing most of Part 2's US distribution deals to fall through. Following this, the movie was a massive box office office bomb only making 10% of what the original brought in and was quickly dumped on home video. Now, Fright Night Part 2 did receive a DVD transfer in 2003, but it was wildly criticized for just being a lazy hack job in pretty much just the same print as the VHS with barely anything upscaled at all. The best home video release to date is a wildly circulated bootleg Blu-ray which uses a high definition TV version of the film at its source. But there hasn't been an official version of the movie released in almost 20 years, and it's unlikely that there will be anytime soon. Number 8, Clown House. Before we get into this entry though, I just want to quickly flag up a content warning for it, because unfortunately I'm going to have to talk about an instance of child sexual abuse in relation to this movie, real life child abuse, um, and if that's triggering in any way, I won't be going into detail or anything like that, but obviously I thought it was worth flagging before we get into it. So yeah, apologies for that. 1989's Clown House is a film that wouldn't muster any intrigue at all if it wasn't for two reasons. The first is that it's the very first film of a then very young Sam Rockwell, and the second is the reason that it's so scarce in the first place, and this time definitely for good reason. While it did initially pick up something of a fandom when it first launched, it has since been mired in controversy thanks to the actions of its director Victor Salva. And that's because before the film was released, Salva was convicted of sexually abusing one of the film's young stars and even videotaping one of the incidents. And though it was nevertheless released on both VHS and Laserdisc in 1990, the increasing uproar around Salva, who continued to work in the industry by this point, ensured the film's final official release date was a 2003 DVD. Due to protests at the time surrounding Salva, the DVD was quickly pulled though, and no distributor has touched it ever since because, of course not. Number 7, Alien Abduction Incident in Lake County. Alien Abduction Incident in Lake County is a much bigger reproduction of a film that already released in 1989 called The McPherson Tape. This remake was made for TV in 1999 and was immediately mired in controversy over its apparent use of real footage. Put simply, at the time, similar to Blair Witch, nobody really knew if this was a movie, or if it was a documentary, or something in between. Of course, its validity was immediately debunked once people realized what its inspiration was and what it was taking influence from. However, unlike most films on this list, Alien Abduction hasn't ever graduated beyond VHS, so unless you're able to seek out a very rare copy of the videotape, you're going to be forced to rely on grotty VHS rips posted to YouTube again. 
And though the McPherson tip did get a swanky new Blu-ray in 2020, the same treatment hasn't been afforded to this TV remake. And that is notable because it was produced by Paramount, who of course now have Paramount Plus. And like I said, with the thing about Disney Plus, why aren't these movies on these streaming services? Like, surely, again, this is what they're made for. Sorry to repeat myself, but like, what good are you if you don't have your back catalog on? From the main stuff to the rare stuff. Oh, I'm just going off on one. Never mind. Let's get on to the next bit. Number six, visit a queue. A couple of Takashi Miike's more transgressive turn-of-the-century horror movies are incredibly difficult to watch legally right now. In fact, they're kind of a pain in the ass, and that definitely goes for his 2001 movie, Visit a Q. The film was released on DVD in the early 2000s, but never moved beyond that. There's no bootleg of the Blu-ray, there's no availability on streamers, it's just dead in the water as far as the distributors are concerned. However, this time around, it's probably not an issue of laziness on a distributor's part, but actually the content of the film itself. See, given the movie's more out there themes, especially incest, it's perhaps not terribly surprising that Visit a Q isn't the easiest movie in the world to track down. But considering that some of the other more effed up Miike movies are available to buy and stream, this does feel like a strange omission. But accepting the relatively low demand for this movie to get re-released compared to the director's other more popular movies that are still sitting in obscurity, you probably shouldn't get your hopes up for this one coming to streaming on Blu-ray anytime soon. Though now I've said that, I probably jinxed myself and it will definitely come out like next week. Number five, The Devils. Surely one of the most high-profile films on this list is 1971's The Devils, directed by Ken Russell. Russell's highly controversial film about a 17th century Roman Catholic priest being accused of witchcraft received an X rating in the UK for its graphic depictions of sex and violence at the time, and was banned in numerous countries. Despite receiving a major release from Warner Brothers and making over $11 million worldwide and being considered one of the greats of the horror genre, it's never received an official release for ages. In fact, the last official disc release was a 2012 UK DVD, but Warner Brothers would only allow the theatrical cut to be issued, with the famed director's cut being left in limbo yet again. And tragically, no version of The Devils has yet been released on Blu-ray. Though the theatrical cut has been present on streaming services like Shudder and the Criterion Collection in recent years, at the time of recording, it's since been taken off and it's unclear whether it will return at any given point. Number four, Trick or Treat. 1986's Trick or Treat, not to be confused with Trick or Treat, by the way, which is just another great movie altogether, is something that 80s horror aficionados absolutely love. Perhaps most fondly remembered for its cameos from Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons, and making over double its budget at the box office, by the way, the movie has been tragically tricky, sorry, to track down over the years. Trick or Treat received a release on DVD all the way back in 2002, 20 bloody years ago, and did receive a Blu-ray in 2016, but only from Germany, and only limited to 1,500 copies, so what use is that to me? As you can imagine, with the scarcity, these Blu-rays were snapped up immediately, and with any streaming services that it's going to be plonked on anytime soon, your best look at watching this movie legally is tracking down one of these second-hand copies and paying a pretty penny for it. Don't know why I did that in sync, but I quite liked it. Now this one's really annoying because it feels like the perfect fodder to go on something like Shudder, but unless there's some kind of rights issue that I probably don't know about, which probably is the case because all horror movies are wrapped up in some rights issue or another, looking at you Friday the 13th, we probably won't get it anytime soon. Number three, Guinea Pig. Guinea Pig is one of the most infamous horror franchises of all time, and if you haven't heard of it, you're probably doing yourself a favor. Like, you, you, you don't wanna know about these movies, I promise. You, like, trust me, trust Josh. It's comprised of a series of six Japanese exploitation films focused on the human body being mutilated in extremely realistic fashion. So, yeah, I told you, you probably, you probably didn't want to know, did you? Yeah. They're so extreme, in fact, that memorably, the second movie in the trilogy, Guinea Pig 2, Flesh and Blood, was seen by Charlie Sheen, yes, that Charlie Sheen, and he thought it was so real, he thought he was really watching a snuff film that he called the FBI. He called the FBI down and was like, I've just watched some weird stuff, and you need to come and arrest everyone that was involved in making it, because I think someone died. I, I kind of think someone died. 
Fortunately, the guy was wrong with his first thought, and after an investigation it was, of course, found that there was no snuff movies being made and that everything in the film was just fictional. But still, that kind of notoriety, of course, cultivated a fan base, and as a result, there has been demand to get these movies on streaming services, or at least a premium Blu-ray release. And the franchise as a whole received its last home video release as a four-disc box set in 2005, which, due to its rarity and the cult fandom surrounding the Gore-filled series, has caused prices to skyrocket on second-hand sites. And of course, Guinea Pig has never received a Blu-ray release to speak of, though considering the scuzzy nature of these movies, that could just be by intent. I mean, the whole point is that they're supposed to be like seedy, mysterious movies that you can't get your hands on, and just, I guess, having a Blu-ray version of that in high definition or maybe even 4K would maybe take away from that allure. You can really tell when I'm improvising in these entries, can't you? Because I talk a lot of crap, just a lot of BS. Like, it just starts spewing out my mouth. Like it is now, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry. Number two, The Night Flyer. 1997's Night Flyer is based on the 1988 Stephen King short story of the exact same name. And while it reviewed poorly at the time of its release, it has a warm place in many horror fans' hearts due to Miguel Ferreira's central performance and the spectacular creature effects. Despite the fandom around it though, its last DVD release was all the way back in 2000 and we haven't had an update ever since and of course that is long since out of print. And again, given that Warner Brothers owns the rights to this movie, they should really just pull their finger out and figure it out. Like if they don't want to release a Blu-ray, put it on HBO Max. But then I suppose this is Warner Brothers we're talking about and I mean, they can't even release the movies they've made, so what chance has this got? At the end of the day, a Blu-ray release for a movie with such striking prosthetic effects feels like an absolute must, like a total no-brainer. If Stephen King adaptations are getting trapped on old formats, what chance does anyone else have of getting their movie re-released? Number 1. Nightmare Classics While most of your favourite horror TV shows are available on streaming or at the very least on DVD or Blu-ray, there is one startling exception to that rule. In fact, this thing isn't even on DVD. Now, Nightmare Classics was a four-episode anthology series produced by none other than acclaimed actress Shelley Duvall and aired on Showtime all the way back in 1989. I always say all the way back for, like, <laughs> anything past 2010. I don't know, maybe that shows my age. That's like the olden days to me, 1989. Now, each of these episodes was adapted from a classic horror story, like The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or The Turning of the Screw. And though the series was released on VHS in 1990, it hasn't received an update to DVD in the time since, most likely due to complex rights issues surrounding who actually owns the episodes and who owns the format and the IP and all of that stuff. But given the popularity of anthology horror today on streaming services like Shudder with VHS or on Netflix with the Cabinet of Curiosities, it would be great to have this classic back in the fold, especially with some great names attached to it, like a young Laura Dern popping up at one point. But unfortunately, it does seem like those rights issues that I mentioned earlier are going to get away. And like I say, while not every movie on this list deserves a re-release, I think you know which one I'm talking about, this one absolutely does. Like, this feels like a piece of horror history. And like I said, with the increase in anthology stuff right now, I want to see how it slots alongside the more contemporary thing. Thing? Stuff. Movies. Television shows. You know what I mean. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any other movies I missed off here that have been trapped and unavailable for years? Let me know. And while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, I've been Josh. Thank you for putting up with me, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.